all 4x4s are the same. While most manufacturers think size matters, a small minority reckon that good things come in little boxes. Like Fiat. For years, their only proper off-roader has been one of the smallest cars they make, the Panda. And this is their latest version, the Panda Cross. The Cross is their most extreme off-roader to date. It's a fully reworked version of the standard Panda 4x4. And it looks it. On the outside, you get big bumpers, protective skid plates and side mouldings. The Cross comes with larger mud and snow tyres fitted as standard, which give it a slightly increased ride height over the standard 4x4. And all this fancy bodywork front and rear isn't just for show. It allows the Cross to attack steeper angles of incline. But the biggest differences are under the skin. Two engines are available, a 80 horsepower, 1.3 litre diesel, on this 875cc twin-air petrol engine producing 90 horsepower. It does lack quite a bit in torque, this little twin-cylinder engine. Now, that's something you'd think would be a big drawback, but in fact they've installed quite a low first gear which compensates for that. And the Cross has another trick up its sleeve, weight. This little panda weighs just 1,090 kilograms, which, although it's not much of a powerhouse, gives it almost the same power to weight ratio as a diesel Range Rover. But when you're off-road, power means nothing if you don't have good traction. So Fit have fitted a terrain control system. Terrain control devices have been available on bigger 4x4s for some years. This is the first time one's been available on a vehicle of this size. There are three settings. Auto is for normal road driving and, provided grip is good, 98% of the engine's power will be sent to the front wheels. But when faced with conditions like this, you need to be using option two, off-road. Now the car's differential locks to engage permanent four-wheel drive and the electronic stability control works to brake wheels that are slipping. Fiat maintained the cross can tackle gradients of up to 70% and side slopes at 55%. The only trouble is, when you're off-roading, what goes up has to come down. And that's where setting three on the terrain dial comes in, hill descent. This uses the car's electronic stability and ABS systems to maintain a constant speed on downhill sections. It's a completely automated system. Feet off everything, feet off, feet off, hands off. Oh no, you do have to still keep steering. So the Panda Cross is good, but how good? In 2005, we put a standard Panda 4x4 up against a mighty Range Rover. It fought like a terrier, but eventually the big dog won. So, 10 years on, can the Cross go one better? Can it possibly keep up with the greatest off-roader ever? The Land Rover Defender. He's off. Driving the Defender will be Bob Harris. His company trains 4x4 drivers, so he's a bit useful on the slippery stuff. I never thought I'd be chasing a Land Rover Defender in a little Fiat. Ooh, don't like look at this. I think I've got a better steering lock than him. I can't go through there. What? 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 Oof. A bit high, it's a bit high. <laughs> oh, I'm hogging, I'm hogging down in the middle. Oh, oh. oh, I've hit my radio button. He's now heading into what looks like a, a bog from hell. Oh, I don't fancy this. I'm struggling, struggling to slow it. I've lost all momentum. It's uphill from here to the finish. Well, he may be stuck, but we're going to sail by. 
the defender's extra 700 kilos of weight had been its downfall. At nearly 16,000 pounds, the Panda Cross is an expensive small car. But as a nimble, go-anywhere off-roader, it's an absolute steal. You're joking! No, no, that's too far. Uh, that's... We hit that wading pool at way too fast a speed. Oh, 